I love a guy who delivers on his word. Yesterday, and we were just checking if we get some audio up and we're going to hear him okay, um, I'll wave at him, okay. he might wave at me. Um, a guy says, I'll talk to anyone, and he comes on the platform, and he has. He's been all over the media, and he joins us now, and I'm happy to have him with us, is um, the former uh, head of uh, Te Fata Ora, the health system, or chair, chair, and I, I think the fact that he's chair is important, and also the current chair of the Environmental Protection Authority, uh, former unionist, former uh, businessman or business director, uh, and someone I had a beer with, uh, I've had a few beers with over many years ago, uh, Rob Campbell. Rob, how are you? Welcome to the platform. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Sean. I'm good. Are you okay? Yeah, great. You've had a hell of a week, haven't you? Uh, well, um, these things happen in sort of public life, don't they? So you've had a couple of bumps in the road yourself yeah. from time to time. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Rob, I, I need to ask you, when you said that stuff, did you have an idea of the consequences that might flow from it or did you genuinely think it had just, there'd be no consequence from it. Because a lot of people have come up to me and speak like, oh, he was going to go down in flames. It was all part of a grand plan. No, I'm not that great on grand plans. So there was there was no plan. I mean, uh, when I write something on LinkedIn, I probably typically get anything from twenty to 50,000 views. So... Um, I was obviously aware that people would see it. Uh, so you don't write something if you don't think it's going to have some kind of impact. Uh, what on, impact did you want it to debate. have, Rob? I wanted to draw attention to what I thought was uh, a very poorly uh, put together uh, policy on an important infrastructure issue. And... That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, right in the middle of that is a view from the National Party about co-governance um, more broadly uh, working closely with Māori organisations uh, on matters of public impact. Uh, and uh, my views about that are well known uh, I took on the role at Fatuora, for example. Uh, one of the reasons was that I thought that that legislation, and still do, with its inclusivity of Māori organisations, uh, was important and positive. Now, I know everyone doesn't agree with that point of view, but it's my view and it's one I've expressed so many times uh, I can't count. Uh, so what was I doing? I was saying something clearly in my private capacity as a citizen, uh, but I was saying it for... Well, can, I just, can I just, without being rude and interrupting you, which I'm constantly accused of with many people, you say you were saying it in, in your private capacity. Was your government role the LinkedIn account? Who paid for that LinkedIn account? And was it done under it, the auspices of, of the Fata Ora or... Because I know it listed your, your public roles on your LinkedIn profile. Yes, it does. I'm identified as a director initially, not as... You have to go to find out that I'm... Uh, but it's there. Of Tufata, or, but it is, it is there. You can find it out. That's to hide, actually, Sean. So uh, that's just a fact of, of the, my background and the things that I do. Okay. So who, pays for done, your link, who was paying for your LinkedIn account? Oh, of course, I was paying for it. Okay. The iPad I use... The iPad I use to do it is mine. Mm. I've never had one from the health system. The account is mine. It's never had any payment from any outside organisation. And it was done at night. And although I do work at night quite often for Tafaru Aura, or did, um, I don't think anyone can claim that my nights belong to the public service. All right. Now, I just want to clear, because I know what will be happening on Twitter probably as we speak. It wasn't at night after a few bevies, was it? Because we all get in trouble on social media in those in those situations. No, I don't. Uh, I gave up the booze a few years ago, Sean. Jeez, uh, good on you, good on you. Um, all right, all right. So you say private capacity. Um, 
And there are very clear rules. I'm sorry, Rob, I've known about them uh, most of my career and I've had to practice them as a journalist, certainly when I worked for, for um, Red Radio, uh, for Radio New Zealand. I, I realised that anything I said outside work could be interpreted as taking a political position and I just, I just didn't do it uh, when I worked there. Um, I, I've looked and tried to sort of sit back and look at your situation. I actually think being a chair um, and having other roles is slightly different than being an operational like chief executive or, or someone. So I actually think there is some validity to your argument. And given, to be honest, that being chair of Fata Ora wasn't your only role, that it would be unreasonable under, under these circumstances to expect someone in that governance position to neuter all public comment in the interest of, of political neutrality, if you see what I'm saying. Uh, you're not exclusively employed by the public service, so I would actually argue that maybe more so than a chief executive, you would get some latitude. But there can be no doubt that every expert that's pontificated on this and the armchair critics um, on social media have said there were rules and you did break those rules pretty clearly. Do you now accept that? Um, I accept that I have stepped outside the Public Service Commissioner's interpretation of those rules. Uh, I And I still think, and I approach these things pretty carefully, and I have to or I wouldn't have been around so long, um, I approach them pretty carefully, and so I'm very well aware of the code of ethics. Uh, it's often with me to refer to because I often have to had to make judgments about other directors who have expressed views which are not necessarily mm. entirely neutral, and on occasion even had to explain to a minister why that particular view, while it wasn't neutral, uh, didn't harm the reputation of our organisation. And when you read a thing like a code of ethics, you've got to read it all, not read it selectively. Mm. So what I was reading was the paragraph that referred to what you do in your private capacity. It's specifically provided for in the code. In that, it says that the primary thing you have to have regard to is not undermining public trust in your organisation. Mm. Now, I don't believe there's any way that what I have said was undermining public trust in Te Whatu Ora. Uh, I've never seen any evidence that it was. I, maybe it has. I don't know. Maybe someone has some evidence. Oh, okay, I'm going to ask you. You say, context, yeah, you say context is important. I'm going to give you an even broader context and ask you whether you've considered it. If you had gone unadmonished, if your comments... And because you've already admitted that, that lots of people read your stuff, you're a guy of some profile, if your politicised comments, and there's no doubt why we can say they weren't political comments about Luxon, about National, if they had Absolutely. gone on unremarked, let's step outside the health system and say for the entire public service it would be impossible or it would certainly undermine the ability and the perception of a public service and you might have had all other public sorts of other public servants suddenly spouting off on social media about their political views because they'd say if it was good enough for Rob Campbell, it's good enough for me. And that in a wider context would be damaging to the public service, to the bureaucracy, to any government as a whole. I hear that and these are very serious issues, which is why there is a code of conduct and why I support the code of conduct and why I'm